Hi everybody, you didn't think I was going to forget about coffee and crafts, did you? Being stuck inside is the perfect opportunity to work on some new crafts. So I have a few I'm going to show you. Uh, the first one I'm doing today is using material, it's shrink material called Shrinky Dinks. And it's pretty cool. Now, anybody who's been to my office, you may know that I'm kind of a Harry Potter fan. In fact, I just went to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter this year for the first time. It was absolutely amazing. And it really got me inspired to make some new Harry Potter crafts. So this week, that's what I'm going to be doing and sharing with you. I have my coffee right here ready to go. It is, of course, in one of my mugs I got from the school. This is my work surface, so we're going to get ready to work. So we have a number of different type of materials to work with and try out. A lot of which I either got from the dollar store or Endeavors. Endeavors actually is delivering right now, so if there's any art supplies that you didn't pick up and you think you're going to need, you can call or email them and get your supplies to you, which is pretty fantastic of them. As you can see, I have some Crayola markers. These are the metallic markers. I have a ton of different types of Sharpies to work with. I have some Stabilo markers that I got down at Endeavor. I have some alcohol-based markers that I also got at Endeavors, and a whole bunch of colored pencils. So we're going to be trying all of these to see what, if anything, gives the best result. So the first thing we're going to need is some reference. So I went online and printed off some pictures of some of my favorite of the Harry Potter candies. So chocolate frogs are definitely a favorite so I have so many of those. And then I like some of the um, shop logos like we have Honeydukes which is the one of the shops. This is its logo. More chocolate frogs, some Felix Felicis. I know technically it's a potion, but they do sell it in Honeydukes as a candy. This one here just has a ton of different Harry Potter things to reference. So yeah, I have lots of different things I can look at. And from there, I have some ideas. And uh, I'm going to sketch out some ideas for myself. So here is a couple of the different brand Shrinky Dinks that I have. One is the official Shrinky Dink, as you can see here. So that's the official Shrinky Dink. And it says down here, clear sheets. You can also get it in white, so if you wanted something that was less transparent. But if you go to the dollar store, you can actually get just the regular old shrink sheets. So as you can see here, it says that your image will shrink by 50%. So that's how you're making the charms. So fear not, those of you who don't typically draw, what you can do is actually take a reference photo, like what I'm gonna do here, and put it underneath, and then trace on top of it. 
Now we're going to try and fit a few of these on here and we're going to start with the Sharpies. So the first thing I need to do is trace out my design on the paper and then color it in. So I'm going to start by drawing out the design. I tend to like to turn my paper when I work, so I'll just have to line it back up here and then continue drawing. Now, I'm not being very exact right now, like if you're doing a really nice project you're going to want to try to be more exact with what you're doing. Alright, so another thing you're probably going to need to do is test out your different markers to see for color, what colors you have. So I have a couple of different purples here. And we'll just test out up in this corner to kind of see which ones I like, if they're all the same, you know, how they show up. Yeah, see that one's really light. The other thing we can do is try mixing. So I can put some blue down and maybe put some of the darker purple over top and see how that looks. Ooh, see, I actually really like that. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Let's see if there's a difference if I put the purple down first and then some blue. Yeah, no, I definitely like the just the purple this one here on its own the best I think so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with this purple the other thing I want to see is what about the uh, yellows or gold so I have a gold marker so that's what that looks like it's kind of dark that's the gold I have uh, a bronze color oh that one's a lot lighter I do kind of like that one. So that's the bronzy color. And then I actually have some yellows. So that's really, really light. Let's see, is this yellow the same? Yes. So I'm not sure if the yellows look better or if the golds do. I'm just thinking I probably won't be able to get incredibly fine detail with the golds because I only have it in the larger barrel where with this one here so like this where with these ones here I have the fine tip so I may end up going with the yellow just to do the fine tip but uh, why don't we try the, the gold first just to see if I can do it because I do like the way it reflects so I'm going to try with the with these two here. Now I don't have a white permanent marker so for the chocolate frog actual logo or lettering in the center maybe that's where I will use the yellow. We'll see when I get there I guess. So the first thing I'm going to do because the markers can actually rub other markers off. So as you can see. So it's probably the best idea for me to get most of the purple down first and then the gold detailing. So I guess the first thing I'm going to do is start working with the purple and getting that in. And I'm not going to do all the details that this has because it will shrink quite a bit. So there's not really much point of me getting super super fine details. And I find it's better to work from this way over because you're going to drag your hand through it and you don't really want to do that.
now what I can do is actually take this away to kind of get a look at it, see how it's coming. So, it's all right. I'm gonna color in the purple spots real quick. see that I've smudged some places by running my hand through it. So if you're working on this, try to be a little bit more careful than what I'm being. I'm just showing you what you can do. Okay, so there's some of the purple. Now, probably for the letters, I'm going to want to do those next. Just because they're a little bit more delicate and detailed, so I'll try to get those on So we're going to take that away again and see how we did. Not bad. That looks... Yeah, that looks a little bit like it should. It'll be a lot easier to see when we have the background on there. The purple. Next thing I'm going to look at is little circles that are inside. So the next thing we're going to try is actually the alcohol markers because I have quite a few colors. What I'm going to do is some Birdie Bot beans in these. So we'll do a couple of different ones just down here, real simple.
Okay, so the next thing we're going to try is the Crayola markers. I don't have very many colors and they are in the metallic. I do have a black and a green though, so I think I'll try making a cauldron cake. Okay, the next thing we're going to try is some uh, markers that we have, this Tabilo, and we have a lot of colors with this, um, so we're going to use the colors the best we can on that here, and we'll do something right here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is colored pencils. I think they might work better on the um, white Shrinky Dink and not so much on the clear because if we try, it doesn't really do much. So it's, it's not really not really gonna work so as you can see there's doesn't really work so what I'm going to do is uh, put some more I'm gonna draw a little bit more okay so Last thing I'm going to do, because I have my chocolate frog, I would like an actual chocolate frog as well. So I'm going to draw that. What I do is I'm going to actually bring this and I look at what a frog actually looks like here. Maybe I'll have a have a better idea of what this guy should look like.
And there we go. We are done. Now it's time to cut them all out, bake, and see. So next step, let's cut them out. Okay, so the hard thing with these is actually cutting them out because sometimes they will crack. So you have to be pretty careful when doing it or you will wreck your project. If you just saw there, that just cracked. And that's why you don't want to have your stuff too close to each other. So that way, if it does crack like that, it's not going to ruin something else you've drawn. Oh, if you look there. So, do not touch the markers. It comes off super easy. So, I would say those are not successful, and I don't like those ones. we go. And our next step is to follow the instructions here on baking. So I am preheating my oven 325. Now it's important that you follow the instructions that came with your shrinky dinks, the ones from the dollar store are thinner, so they're going to bake at a different temperature than these ones here. So make sure you follow your directions. Now what I'm going to do is use a baking sheet and put out all my pieces. So you want to have them with the uh, marker side up. That way they bake properly. So I'm gonna get these all laid out. As you can see here, the one with just the regular markers did not fare so well. The more I touch it, the more it comes off on my fingers and becomes clear. So between all of them, the Sharpies look like so far they've done the best. We'll see about the alcohol markers and the metallic markers, see how those do after they've been baked. And the great thing about this is I will be able to fix the candy piece by going back over it with permanent markers later. You can hear my little fluffy friend here. He's kind of trying to help out, making all kinds of noise because we're paying attention to the crafts instead of what he wants me to be doing, which is paying attention to him. Isn't that right, Oliver? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, well, we're getting back to the craft now. Something else you can see is I actually... Something else you can see is I actually punched holes in all of the pieces so that we can turn them into charms later. So I have them all laid out and ready to go in the oven. Okay, so our oven is all preheated. So what we're gonna do is put it inside from one to three minutes. You just kind of have to keep an eye on it. Oop, look, they're moving around on me. I'll just quickly set everything back to where it should be so they're not touching 
And there we go. So there it is. And they will be a whole lot smaller when we come back. Okay, I've waited about two minutes. So I'm going to open up. As you can see, they are quite small now. Here we go. So yeah, quite a difference in how small they got. Now, if it is uh, bubbling up, like if you look on the chocolate frog right now, it is kind of crinkly. You can fix that by using a piece of paper and patting it down. So I'm thinking these beans may be a little bit too small to put on a keychain, but I will find something to do with them. What I'm gonna do just take my oven mitt here, take the paper and fold it over and just try patting this out just to make sure it's a little bit smoother. Get it kind of flattened out. As you can see our pieces are quite a bit smaller. If you look here, this is our test piece that we had earlier. And if you look at the width of the chocolate frog here, compared to the width of the paper, it's quite a bit different. It's, it's really thickened up. The other thing I noticed is it's not quite as flat, so I'll have to work on that next time. And all the pieces really darkened up. Like if you remember, this purple here was the purple we used. And that's how dark it got. Same with the frog, he's very dark. The beans look really good, but they're really small compared to when I started. So next time I would do those a little bit bigger. So... That's our craft for coffee and crafts for today, uh, Shrinky Dink Charms. Let me know if you're going to try it out and what you're planning on making.